just want to express my appreciation to to all of you uh, here uh, for giving us an opportunity to come and speak to you um, to do a reading of this book um, and, uh, and for the work that you do here, um, encouraging more African people uh, to, uh, to read, uh, to participate in in uh, reading, I think it's an extraordinarily important thing. So thank you very much for this opportunity. Yeah, how do you uh, how do you change people's Because if they want to be uh, indoctrinated, because that's what it really is, uh, since we've been in this country, we've been indoctrinated to, to believe and, and uh, see certain things. So we long for these things, and in the meantime, become a victim. I don't think that, I think indoctrination is real. You can't get around that. You see it every day. But I don't think that's the fundamental uh, problem. I don't think indoctrination is the fundamental thing that keeps us in check. I think it's the gun that keeps us in check. If indoctrination worked, that cop wouldn't be standing out there in front of the door of this bookstore when I came up. If indoctrination alone, if indoctrination alone did it, you wouldn't find our, our communities, not just here, but throughout this country, occupied by so many cops. It's the gun. It's that, it's the gun, it's the, when I say the gun, I mean all other things associated with it. I mean the state itself. The organization of coercion that we are confronted with on a daily basis. It's the courts and the whole social system that works against us because it is the prop, the fact is that one of the reasons that the indoctrination appears to work is because you are punished if it doesn't work. It's, there is an element of punishment associated with it not working. If you act a certain way, you're punished. Which is one of the reasons young African people in this country now are under such a serious assault. Because they're in a permanent state of resistance. White man say you wear your hat this way, they wear the hat that way. White man say you wear your pants this way, they wear the pants that way. There's a permanent state of resistance all the time that's happening with young Africans. Uh, 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 and the problem, of course, that we have is that we have not yet achieved the organizational capacity to intervene with these young people to give the resistance some kind of direction and some kind of organization that can contribute to our liberation. So indoctrination is really important and my being here in this book is one of the ways that we try to take on the indoctrination but I'm telling you that indoctrination by itself doesn't mean anything. I don't remember the year and uh, I may be the only one in the room who's old enough to remember when the lights went out in New York. Heard stories. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The lights, the, when the lights went out, all them indoctrinated Africans went shopping. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so indoctrination didn't mean a thing. Once the lights went out and Africans, poor Africans, they went and copped everything they needed. And I'm saying that even though indoctrination is, is, is significant, I mean, they work on us every day, all the time, and use every venue, the schools, which is one of the most vicious assaults made on us is the school system. I believe the school system in this country does more damage to African consciousness in a single day than crack cocaine did during the entire time it was here. It's a very vicious thing that happens. The schools, you know, every movie, and even now, the control of the political of the economy, that means that the only thing that young people can listen to in terms of music, et cetera, is garbage that, you know, that they, the, the bourgeoisie, the ruling class says, you know, how terrible it is. Young people listen to that, but they won't let you listen to anything else. You know, they won't allow any progressive, anything positive to get to make the airwaves, etc. So indoctrination, yeah, it's there. But the biggest thing is the gun. And let me tell you why. It's because, look at what you saw in Egypt just the other day. It was, it was the conditions that drove people into a spontaneous uprising against their situation. It was conditions. So somebody can tell you day in and day out how much you love being, how much you love being kicked in the butt. Day in and day out, they can tell you how much you love being kicked in the butt. But after a while, you know, uh, you know, uh, people come to the conclusion that they just got to stop this butt kicking, no matter, even if they can't justify it easily in their own brain. And and I'm saying the indoctrination isn't as effective as most people, as most of us think. What is the problem is that we are not organized enough so that we can raise the question effectively enough. Because even the thing with Barack Obama. Is there people in this room now who think Barack is wonderful and he's just being tricked and he winked at us when he did this thing, etc.? I'm sure. The, the, the thing is, though, it's, it's thin, it's skin deep. Because you scratch the thing and say, well, look, what about this? If you ask the questions, 
nobody can defend the stuff that this Negro has done. This Negro has been more vicious in terms of making war against the people than George W. Bush. George Bush couldn't have got away with what he did. He did not just against people around the world when he was running for office. The only, the, and the first so-called debate they had was in Harlem, New York. Y'all remember that debate? Yeah. And they asked, that somebody asked in Harlem the position on reparations. Who came out against reparations? Barack Hussein Obama. He used the NAACP uh, 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 Father's Day event to come to attack black fathers. He went to Africa and attacked African and African people. He is, white people couldn't have got away with that. A white president couldn't, wouldn't have had dared say or do those things. But that Negro got away with it because he looks like us. And because we, and also because if he failed, it meant a failure for us too. We took that as, as, as people attacking him, they were attacking us too. And so we circle a wagon around this Negro who's cutting our throat every damn day. Every day he's cutting our throat. So, but the point is that if you go and you, you, the, the reality is that no matter what Obama says, that it's we in these streets who have to face the pigs, who have to face the police. It's we who have to face slum lords who are bleeding us to death. I don't care what Obama said. The reality is we got to deal with that stuff in the real world. So you have the so-called indoctrination, right? Then you got the real world that we have to deal with, and that's the thing that we have to respond to. And increasingly, if people like us are on the streets, are involved and, and explaining this phenomenon to people, increasingly more and more people will come to the same conclusion that we've come to in defense of themselves.